listening to the Doing Motherhood podcast, where we talk all things Black mothers today. Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in each week for another week. I'm really excited about this episode because it's my birthday episode. <laughs> I have on my birthday green. I got I got dressed for y'all. I'm excited about what we're talking about today. But before we get into the main segment, of course, we always start with what's the goings on and what has been going on all the way up to this morning is that it's been raining babies. There have been babies born. Let's see. So in the last eight days, no, seven days, as of yesterday, seven days, there were three babies born. Two were born over the weekend. One was born early last week. And baby, the fourth baby, which is actually my 86th baby that I have assisted in bringing into the world. Um, baby 86 was born this morning at 918 this morning. So I'm just excited about all this new life, all these Libra babies coming into the world. <laughs> All these September babies coming into the world. It's really exciting. So life has been fast and furious for the last week, and it's going to continue to be fast and furious. Um, my work life, anyway, is going to continue to be fast and furious over the next few weeks because I have another few things rolling out, and I'm going to put you all in the loop in, in a little bit here. So getting excited about that. So September and October tend to be my busiest birth months. November this year is actually going to be a busy birth month too. And then in December is when I get a break. My plan is to, I'm likely visiting Alabama so I can spend time with my oldest son, Jahari. And um, I haven't been to Alabama before, so I'm going to check out Birmingham. I also want to get out to um, Montgomery, Alabama, which is where the there's a new statue that um that honors the mothers of modern gynecology so if you are not familiar the person that is recognized as the father of modern gynecology is um dr francis marion sims who was he, like i said he's known as the father of modern gynecology he is the man that the way he became the father of modern gynecology was experimenting on and operating on enslaved women. And three of the women that we know that he operated on, according to his notes, are um, Lucy, Anarcha, and Betsy. So these are three women that, from his notes, we know were the test subjects for modern gynecology. And so there has been an, uh, a concerted effort over the last few years, I would say the last four years maybe, I think the, the first time I heard of this um, honoring of these women uh, was about four or five years ago. And so now there has been statues raised um, of them they look amazing on photos, but I'm told that the photos don't give it any glory. So I want to get myself down to Montgomery this winter and see what that's all about. So that's that. If you have been paying attention to the news, we know that yesterday, was it yesterday? Someday this week, R. Kelly, Robert Kelly has finally been convicted after decades of tormenting and traumatizing Black girls and women. It's late, but it's done. And we're waiting for sentencing. And all I want to say is I hope that there is the, if the smallest amount of peace. I hope it's a great amount of peace that his, that his victims, um, the women that he tormented over the years, I hope that they are feeling some sort of some form of peace with knowing that their stories have finally been heard, have been um, believed finally, and something has been done to take care of the person who caused them much harm in their lives. So just glad about that news. Um, and then finally, y'all, 
My son came in my house yesterday. <laughs> My son came in my house yesterday. Y'all know Bryce. Bryce is my my youngest. He's the 18-year-old. He's my soccer player. He has already committed to the University of Denver. So we're so super excited for him with that. Y'all know I've talked about before on this on this show that I'm getting ready planning my life as an empty nester, getting ready for what the empty nest is going to look like for me. And I was just minding my business yesterday. And this child came in and told me that it is possible that he will be gone as early as April. I was ready for June. I was ready for June, July. (laughs) I am not ready for April, but, um, We'll have to see. We'll have to see if he handles his business and which he has been doing. I'm really proud of him. Um, It's a lot for me to wrap my head around. I had to drop him off yesterday and, you know, give him a little tears out, but it's all good. I'm I'm so excited for him. But what that means for me is I need to hurry up and figure out what I'm doing next. So so it's going to all start a little bit sooner than later. Likely. We'll see what goes on. So this is that time where I ask you all to please consider or please continue to listen to the episode. If you are a person who prefers to watch your podcast, you can always catch this podcast on YouTube every week. Um, But the uh, the podcast is also available on all major podcast platforms, including now Amazon and Amazon Music and Audible. So you can catch us in all of those places. Please share and we would appreciate, I would appreciate if you would leave a message or two wherever it is that you listen to the podcast. So first I want you all to know that we actually have a title to our main segment now and that title in ode to Miss Mary J. Blige is the 411. So we have what's the goings on at the top of the show where we'll just kind of catch up. I'll catch you up with what's going on in my personal life and what's going on, you know, out there in the world. And then the 411 is always going to be what we're talking about, our main topic for the day. So the 411 this week is, it's my birthday. It's not my birthday today, (laughs) but my birthday is on Tuesday, October 5th. And I'm getting pretty excited about it. I'm excited about it being Libra season. So, you know, those of us, uh, when Libra season rolls around, this is when you, it's a time to appreciate beauty. It's a time to appreciate balance. It's also a time, um, yeah, to just fit in harmony, peace, justice. Y'all know I'm all about, we got to balance these scales, right? (laughs) So we're looking for justice, looking for peace, looking for beauty. It's fall fashion. We talked about that before, right? Fashion is back. Um, I mean, not that it ever went anywhere, but my favorite fashion season is the fall season. And the weather is breaking in Houston, Texas. This is patio season. So this is when um, all the the day parties and the Saturday and Sunday day parties are taking place. I don't, I don't, I'm not out like that because it is still a pandemic. (laughs) We are still being very serious. I'm still being very serious and um, still social distancing and wearing my mask everywhere, even though I am vaccinated, but um, we have to be careful. So I say that to say it is patio season, but y'all still need to do what you need to do and take care of yourselves. But yeah, that's what it is. On October 5th, this coming Tuesday, I will be turning 41 years old and I do not have plans. And this is like my MO every single year. I don't know why, but I start thinking about my birthday in July and August because July and August are when the boy's birthday. Bryce's birthday is July. Jahari's birthday is in August. Around that time, I start thinking about, okay, I think I want to have a party or I want to plan a trip somewhere or go somewhere. And then life happens because once the school season starts and soccer season starts, that's where my focus goes. And then I always look up the week before my birthday and realize I have no plans. So I don't know. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's up in the air. But I can tell you this. Last year for my 40th birthday, I did. I had very solid plans. The plan was for me to wake up in Ghana. That was it. It was like, I just want to wake up in Ghana on my 40th birthday, on a solo trip, my first time to the continent. That was the plan. Coronavirus obviously had different plans, so that didn't go through. Then I planned a trip to Austin, a nice little solo trip at a bed and breakfast, real pretty on Lake Travis. And I wanted to take a hot air balloon ride because that's one of my bucket list items. And I figured, you know what, if I can't get to Africa for my 40th, then I can at least catch a hot air balloon ride. And then that was all set up and ready to go. And then the company had to cancel the day before the flight. So then I was just stuck in Austin. I wasn't stuck in Austin, but I was stuck in Austin. Y'all know I don't pull for Austin like that. Houston all day, every day. So <laughs> Austin, um, I ended up just hanging out, um, had a beautiful view of the lake and really started to focus on what I want my 40s to look like, right? What I want life to look like in my 40s. And so I started out a soft plan. And I'm going to talk about that because I want to talk about what my healing journey has looked like over the last few years and where I see things going now that I'm 41. Well, I'm not 41 yet, but on Tuesday, I'll claim it. But I'm grown, grown now. And it feels like I feel it. So I just want to talk about how that healing, my healing journey has led me here and what I'm looking forward to in the future. And just a little preview into the episode that you'll see next week. I am going to have my personal Reiki counselor here as a guest with us. I'm so excited for her to join us. But she has been such an integral part of my healing journey. And so we're going to continue to talk about healing um, over the next few episodes. So I don't know what Tuesday's going to look like. I said all that to say, I don't know what Tuesday's going to look like. Um, I'm, you know, it'll probably look like work. That's definitely going to be happening. I'll work a little bit that day. I'll probably end up hanging out with friends or maybe even Bryce, I don't know, um, for dinner or happy hour or something. We'll see. But more than, you know, having a party or some sort of gathering um, to celebrate that day, I'm really focused on celebrating the entire year this time and celebrating the year in a way that um, that takes me toward my goals and bigger than my goals, like just the life that I'm planning, that I'm planning out for myself and carving out for myself. So it's, it's getting exciting for me. Even if I don't have a party, it's getting exciting. So for every year at the beginning of the, the new year, so each new year, rather than choosing a resolution, I left resolutions alone a long, long, long time ago. But what I've started to do in the last few years is find a word that I want to focus on and let that word guide me throughout my year. It guides me in my personal life. It guides me in my work life. And um, as long as I'm thinking about that word and reflecting on that word. And so when I say that I'm reflecting, I do some journal work when I meditate, right? I'm meditating with this theme in mind and, and applying it to my life every day, almost every day. I don't do it every single day, but almost every day I'm applying what this word means to me personally and what that's going to look like. For 2021, my word was worthiness or is worthiness. And so in thinking about worthiness, a lot of it had to do with the work that I do. Um, and not just the work that I do, but the work that I haven't been doing <laughs> when I'm talking about the ideas and plans and dreams. So I've had a few business goals and I've had a few um, business ideas that I've, I've 
having countless journals at my house, right? At this point, they've kind of been floating around in the back of my mind. And if I'm being completely honest, the reason that I have not or had not taken action on those on those dreams and those aspirations is because in some way, shape or form, I really didn't have enough belief in myself that I could carry it forward. This podcast being one of them, right? So um, I just didn't, and when I say belief, like I'm a person who knows that when I put my mind to anything that I want to do, I can do it, right? So it's not that I don't think that I have the capability to do it, but it was, am, am I really the person who should be doing this, right? Am I the person who should have this platform and have this and, and be this voice? Am I the person who can really start, you know, XYZ business plan and and really put in the work to put that off. And so if when I got really real with myself at the beginning of the year, I had to take account that the only reason I wasn't acting on these things is because I did not feel that I was worthy of the possible outcomes for my own dreams, right? That's a lot. That's a lot to that's a lot of muck. <laughs> that you have to get through, right? And so um, having that word though, keeping worthy or worthiness at the top of my mind every single day when I meditate and during the times that I'm journaling has helped me push past some of what those blocks are. And so now that I've been working on that at the top of the year, I have seen right? Some of those dreams really start to come true and move into fruition. So now I feel like, or not that I feel like, what I see of myself is that I am now operating in my full potential and at my full capacity. And when you do that, there's only, so like, it's only up from here, right? <laughs> it's only up from here. And the possibilities become endless. And it's just, I think that sometimes, especially speaking as a mother, that there are times, you know, we get into the the cycle, the cycle of life, right? That kind of being on that hamster wheel, we got to go to work, we got to go to school, we have to take care of these kids, we have to take care of this house and all of the things that everyday life demands of our attention and our time and our energy. And we tend to put everything else to the back burner. I caught myself just the other day telling myself, well, I want, there's a trip that I want to take, but I keep telling myself, well, I can't really take this until I know Bryce is in school and he's settled and I know he's really good before I leave. But it's like, do I really have to do that? Like Bryce has a whole other parent <laughs> who was actively with his hands involved in his life just as much as I am. So it's like, girl, go, right? We don't have to wait. So I just want to encourage you as women, as mothers, that like we still need to keep our dreams at the forefront of our minds. We may not be able to act on it right away. We may not, we might have to put some time aside, right? But don't let those dream, what they say about a dream deferred, dries up like a raisin in the sun. So, <laughs> so now that I have been working on working with this word worthy, working with this idea of worthiness in everything that I do and and moving in that, right? I find myself moving with a lot more confidence. I have a lot more confidence in my decisions. And that only helps me as I'm making these plans and just ticking these boxes off as things get done, right? Another big thing that I found to be really important for myself when I think about how worthy I am of um, of whatever, right? Whatever I think that I need, whatever it is that I want, um, asking for help. Asking for help is a big one for me. And I know when I talk to a lot of my mom friends, especially those of us who are single parents, um, 
or, can, you know, I'm co-parenting, but he lives many states away. And so a lot of the time and energy and effort put into raising the boys um, falls on me in the physical sense, right? In being present on an everyday basis. And so I've always kind of felt that I just had to do everything on my own. So I didn't ask for help and I didn't think that I was deserving of the help. That's really, we'd have to get into conversations with my therapist about that. So we're not going to break that down on the show today, but there is, there was just this, you know, this old pattern of thought that I had to figure everything out on my own. I needed to be able to carry everything on my own. My household needs to run on my own. Listen, I was Miss, how Boosie say, I-N-D-E-P-E. Listen, you know the jam. That's my, that's my song. It was my song. Boosie has changed things a little bit, but, but that was definitely your girl's anthem, okay, at a point, right? I was that girl, Miss Independent. Do you know what that means? It means I was exhausted is what it means. It means that I was exhausted. It means that I have been running on fumes for years. It means that I was doing the absolute most with no breaks, barely any assistance, and you can only imagine, like, what does that look like? You know, what does it look like to be someone always working myself down to the bone until I pass out? It's a lot. So I had to toss that mindset. I'm not ready to let the anthem go yet, but you know, because it was a bop. <laughs> It was a bop and it was mine. But much like we would like to see Boosie get rid of his toxic and limited mindset and thinking, right? We've got to get rid of those old patterns, those old thought patterns, the old behaviors that we, those things that keep us in those cycles, right? So hyperdependence, which is, was, that was my toxic trait. Um, I don't claim it anymore. I'm asking for all the help. I'm talking about if I go in the grocery store, I'm asking everybody to pull this down from the top shelf. <laughs> help me out to my car with my groceries, right? Just every day realizing like there are people around. And that's the other thing is that I think for the longest time, I didn't think people would be willing to help. And the more that I am allowing myself that assistance, I realize people are absolutely um, happy to and willing to. And so there's no reason for me or you or anyone else to have to carry so much, um, on yourselves. So what has focusing on my worth in 2021, how has that helped me so far this year? Well, I can give you in terms of my business, it has helped me expand my business. So my doula business is not only flourishing, but it is beginning to expand. I have a team now. I have an announcement that I'll be making on my birthday. So make sure you're paying attention to my social media on October 5th. But um, I'm seeing expansion in my business. I relaunched this podcast and and I have a, I have a producer. I'm in a studio. I was doing this in my house, y'all. <laughs> I was doing this in my bedroom, right? And so it's just these little things, like as I start to realize, you know, you don't have to record and edit and produce a podcast all on your own in your bedroom. There is a team of people who are willing to help put this thing together. Um, I'm just, I'm, it's actually just become a lot more fun. That's really what it comes down to is that the work is not so hard. It's not so tiring. It doesn't bog me down. I have enough energy at the end of the day to expend on myself and expend with my children and my friends and family and loved ones the way that I would prefer to do that. Um, what else has happened? You know, when we start, when we start taking into account what we, our needs and our wants, and not only taking into account what those things are, but actively working toward them because you realize now that you're worthy of all of these dreams coming true or worthy of meeting these goals that you have set for yourself. Um, unfortunately, 
sometimes that means that people get left behind. And that's been the hardest part for me, right? Like realizing that friendships no longer fit the way that they fit for so long. Um, Sometimes even some family relationships don't fit the way that things have been working for so long. And this isn't even about other people's roles in my life. It's more about realizing for myself the role that I was playing, whether I was, you know, playing the sidekick role or um, just doing the most for other people that I wasn't even doing myself, doing for myself. Um, when you take into account worthiness, you it I just it became I got to a point where I realized like I'm either going to hold on to these strained and difficult and broken relationships and keep trying to hammer at them and figure out what's going on or realize that I am worthy and deserving of friendships and relationships that are healthy, that are whole, that are reciprocal, that are mutually respectful, right? And so as the old is clearing out, it's making room for me to build and find um, those healthier relationships that that I've been looking to have and that I absolutely deserve to have in my life, right? And so kind of just knocking out all of the stress and the strife (laughs) because it doesn't have to be that way. That's what really what I'm coming down to say is that, you know, realizing that when you know your worth, it's a lot less nonsense that you're willing to put up with. And so that's where I find myself, right? Honoring myself in a new way. Um, And in all of that, what I have uncovered is my own power. And that's a little scary. It can be scary. It felt scary at first. Now I'm in it. I'm square standing square in the middle of it. (laughs) But once all of that old, like old patterns, old thinking, old beliefs, once you start to peel those things away, or at least for myself, what I realize is once I start peeling those things away and really get to who I am at the core of myself, who I've known myself to be for my entire life. Um, It's you real. I'm starting to realize like what it means to actually know my power, stand in my power and not be afraid of it. I can be honest in saying that I have my entire life. I've been someone that's like always shrunk back from it a little bit. Right. Um, that's another conversation for my therapist, but <laughs> but I've I've always tried to shy away from it or push it away or um, hide, right? Shrink. I don't really want to be the person in the front. I don't want to be the person on the microphone. I'm good standing in the background and kind of taking care of things in the back. And now I realize that when I am really operating in my full power, that that is how these, like that's the drive, right? That's the engine to get me to these goals and these dreams that I've been set for myself for years now, right? And now I finally can see everything play out the way that I'm planning for it to play out. And so, I'm not waiting for January. (laughs) I've decided um, rather than wait until the first of the year that on my 41st birthday, my word is power. We're rolling forward. Okay. We're getting, we're getting busy early. I don't have time to wait. We have stuff to do. So (laughs) now I see it. The landscape is set. And it's just time to get busy and time to get to work. So when I talk about the celebration for me of 41, that's what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that I finally see my own worth and that I finally am strong enough. I think strong enough is the word that I finally feel strong enough to stand square in the middle of my power and to use it and to use it without being fearful and to use it without feeling like I have to um, sh- 
shrink it away or make other people comfortable, right? We're not doing that no more. Not at 41, not in these grown, grown years. We're going to be grown, okay? So, um, yeah, it's just at the end of all of it, at the end, coming at the end of this this 40th year, um, I'm really starting to realize that all of that, everything that I just talked about from understanding my worth, understanding my worth as it relates to other people, understanding my worth as it relates to my work, understanding my worth as it relates to me creating the life that I want to live, not following. I mean, I, we got to follow the rules, right? <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> but um, I'm no longer willing to put what society has said life should look like before what I feel like my life should look like. So I'm at this point where I'm really creating the life that I want on my own terms. And it's it's a beautiful time to be alive because this is the chance, like we have a chance to do that, right? As Especially as a black woman. As a black woman there, I don't, I don't know that there's been any greater time or that we've had the amount of resources that we have available to us at this point to really make life what we want it to be. Listen, five years ago, not even five years ago, four years ago, I was working every day, clocking in, clocking out. (laughs) I was on other people's time. I was, um, making a living for myself, but I really didn't believe that it, that I could make that same living for myself on my own, doing work that I love to do. And, um, and that I didn't, you know, like without somebody handing me a paycheck for the work or being on someone else's time to complete this work. Right. And so fast forwarding to now, four years later, where I've made every single one of these things come true for myself, it's only giving me that much more impetus to keep going. So it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. It's not. It has been so hard, but it is doable. And I don't have the answers. I don't know what next year is going to look like. I have no clue. I'm focused on being in the present moment right now, working on what I have to work on in front of me. So I don't have the answers, but I do know that everything is figure outable. And as long as I'm willing to try and work hard and do this, um, do this understanding exactly what I'm worth now and understanding my own power, uh, it's all going to be good. And I'm excited about it. So I'm coming home to myself really is what this is. It's a realization that everything that I need to live the life that I feel I deserve, that I want to see for myself, that, um, that I just believe is right for me, I'm... I can make that happen of my own will and power. And I couldn't be more proud of myself or happy for myself than I am right now. And that's something that's been really, really hard for me to say in a long time. So there's that. (laughs) Right. Happy birthday to me. Um, I want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Maya Angelou. I really, I can't remember the exact year that I came across this quote, but I do know that when I, when I came across it, it hit me square in my chest and I was like, Ooh, all right, this is what, this is what I'm going to live toward. And so when I talk about the healing journey that I started some years ago to get me to this point, this quote right here has been the main driver of, of that force. And so Dr. Maya Angelou told us, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do some with some passion, some compassion, some humor and style. That's it. 
for this episode. Thank you for joining us again. Stay tuned for the next episode. It's going to be a healing journey for most of the month. So can't wait to talk with you more about it. Don't forget, you can always write in for the Ask Anya segment. So if you have questions about healing, if you if you want to ask questions about my healing journey, if you have questions of your own, you're on your healing journey, not quite sure where to turn, send them on in to doingmotherhood at anyadula.com. That's the email address you can send it to, or you can DM me on the Instagram page at doing underscore motherhood underscore podcast. I can't wait to talk about this all with you.